Father, we, we thank you for this another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. I pray that you will speak again through my vocal cords, think through my mind. I thank you that all is well today. Let me see deep into these scriptures today so that a mark will be made that can never be erased. It's in Jesus' name we pray and everybody say it. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bibles, go with me to the book of St. John, chapter 14 and verse 26. St. John 14, 26. And I want to read this um, in the King James Bible and in the Amplified Bible. Uh, today, I want to spend my time continuing what we talked about last week. I want to continue to talk about the administrator of the Holy Spirit and it's important that we understand and have a working, intimate relationship with the Holy Ghost. That we understand and that we have a working, intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so he's the administrator of the new covenant. Please understand, when we were delivered from the law and we are now under the grace of God, we have been delivered into the hands of the Holy Spirit. And sometimes he's a forgotten agent. He's a forgotten personality in the Bible. And please, please, please don't think that God needs you. <laughs> you need him. <laughs> you need God. You need God. And so the Holy Spirit and this new covenant of grace, they work hand in hand. And you're going to see that we are no longer under the administration of the law of Moses. We are under the administration of the Holy Spirit. We are no longer under the administration of rule keeping. We are now under the administration of the Holy Spirit. What makes this new covenant so awesome is the administrator. And the Holy Spirit is our administrator. And so I want to really debunk and go against any of those things that we've learned in the past about the Holy Spirit. He is so much more than a chill bump. He is so much more than a jerk and a jiggle. Uh, he is so much more than a whole lot of things that we thought it was. And once you see this, I now want to encourage you to develop a relationship with him where he becomes your greatest friend. He becomes someone that you depend on, someone that you talk to, someone that will lead and guide your life. And you know you are a Christian because you have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. That's what Christianity is all about. Christianity, it, it, it's about a personal relationship with the Holy Ghost. Uh, it's about a personal relationship with God through the Holy Spirit. That's the, that's the amazing thing about Christianity that it is not a religion, it is a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's a one-on-one -on -one relationship with the Holy Spirit. See, uh, please understand something. Everybody that's born again that's a Christian, the opportunity you have is a personal relationship, a time to get to know Him, and He speaks to you. And, and you have like a personal tutor. You have, you have inside information. You, you have an invisible partner that wakes up with you every morning, and goes to sleep with you every night and watches over you. And, 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 and I don't want people to take Christianity and turn it into a religion, which, which so many people have. This is a relationship with a real person. It is a relationship with the third person of the Trinity. And I'm telling you in Jesus' name, it is, it is, the, it is the missing piece to the success that we all strive for and the success that we we want and we need in our life. He's the answer for all of those kind of things. And I'm going to do my best to try to keep back tears because when you know him and when you live with him every day and when you depend on him and when he talks to you and when he guides you and, and then you talk about him and, and you sense his presence, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is the key to everything that's wrong today. And if we as Christian people 
we begin to engage that personal relationship. If we as Christian people will begin to pay attention to that personal relationship and begin to cultivate that personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, then we will tap into something that's greater than anything on this planet. We'll tap into something that's greater than anything this world has ever come to know. And that is a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. And so let's read John chapter 14 and let's study the administrator of the Holy Spirit. And he's, he's administrating God's grace. He's the administrator of forgiveness. He's the administrator of the finished works of Jesus Christ. He's the administrator of your righteousness. He's the administrator of your redemption. He's the administrator of your peace, the administrator of your joy, the administrator of every provision in your life being taken care of, your unseen partner, the Holy Spirit. And I want you to have a, a hunger for him. I want you to get thirsty for him. I want you to learn how to talk to him in the morning. I want you to learn how to talk to him in your mind, on your way to work. I want, want you to learn how to spend time with the Holy Spirit. And then one day you'll recognize his voice speaking to you, guiding you and directing you and warning you. Let's get into this today. John chapter 14, verse 26. First of all, in the King James, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The Bible calls him a comforter. What area do you need comforted in this morning? What areas in your life where you need comfort? The Holy Spirit is a comforter whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus said. He shall teach you. Notice Jesus says the Holy Spirit is sent to teach you. I don't know about you. I need to be taught. I need to be taught. I need the Holy Spirit to teach me. Teach me how to be the man of my household. Teach me how to be in relationship with my wife. Teach me how to, 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 to be the, the pastor you want me to be. Teach me, Lord, about my attitude. Teach me about, about, about everything. And teach me about this life. See, every, every Christian that got born again needs a teacher. Hallelujah. And the Holy Spirit will teach you. Teach me how to walk humbly before you. Teach me how to be content. Teach me how to, how to do all the things that life requires under this new covenant. So he says the Holy Spirit's that teacher. Now, I don't know, you know, you, some of you may think, well, I'm your teacher. No, I'm, I'm a vessel to use to pastor you, but, but you, need a, you, need a, you need a teacher. You, need, you know, you remember you going to school and, and you were kind of behind on certain subjects. You need to get a tutor. And, 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 and the teacher in the classroom would say, well, you, you need some, some tutoring. And, and I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is your tutor. You're being tutored and you're being taught by the author and the finish of our faith. You're being tutored and taught by the one who was behind these scriptures and this new covenant. The Holy Spirit is a teacher. He shall teach you all things. That's powerful. That's powerful. He's not limited to anything. He will teach you all things. The Holy Spirit's the teacher of all things. We've been waiting on the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to come and, you know, give us a chill bumps, and he wants to teach you some stuff. He wants to teach you how to talk. He wants to teach you how to walk in the love of God. He wants to teach you some things. He, want to teach you, he wants to teach you how not to be superior over other people. He wants to teach you some things. He wants to teach you how to forgive where it's hard to forgive. He wants to teach you how to love where it's difficult to love. He wants to teach you some things. Glory be to God. He shall teach you all things, and watch this, and bring all things to your remembrance, praise God. What things? Whatsoever I said unto you. Now look at this in the, the New Living Translation excuse me, the Amplified, John 14, 26, then the Amplified, the Holy Spirit, your teacher, the administrator who also will teach you, teach you things to come. John 14, 26, in the Amplified, he says, but the comforter, now notice what he calls him, the counselor, the helper, the intercessor, the advocate, the strengthener, the standby. Ha, hallelujah, glory. The Holy Ghost is your, is your standby. He's your counselor. If, if anybody needs counseling, you've been through this, this, this pandemic and, and, and people need counseling. And, you, and, and, you know, the Holy Ghost says, I'll counsel you. If, if you'll know how to listen to him, if you'll pay attention, he'll counsel you, praise God. He'll, he's the intercessor. He'll stand between you and God. He's your advocate, praise God. He's your strengthener. If you're weak this morning, the Holy Spirit wants to strengthen you. And he says, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send in my name, he says, the Holy Spirit... Who, will, who the Father will send in my place, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send to represent me, 
and act on my behalf and act on my behalf. He says, this Holy Spirit will teach you all things. He will cause you to recall and will remind you of and bring to your remembrance everything that I've told you. The Holy Spirit. You can't live, you can't live without him. You can't live without him. And yet there are lots of Christians who've tried to be Christians without the counselor, the comforter, the intercessor, the strengthener. And I'm telling you, I'm calling to your attention. I'm calling to the attention of the body of Christ. Please stop trying to be like God without God. And when you are without the Holy Spirit, that's you trying to be like God without God. It won't work. Jesus was completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. Jesus, when he took on a physical body and he dwelt amongst men, Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. Jesus, listen, if Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit, seriously, <laughs> you think you can do without him? Jesus depended on the Holy Spirit. I want to depend on the Holy Spirit. You need to depend on the Holy Spirit. The Bible makes it clear that he was conceived by the Spirit. Jesus was taught by the Spirit. Jesus was empowered by the Spirit at the Jordan River. In fact, I, I think it's worth you looking at this. Look at John, St. John chapter 1, verse 29 through 24. Jesus was conceived by the Spirit. Jesus was taught by the Spirit. Jesus was empowered by the Spirit. Praise God. Conceived by the Spirit. You know, there's coming a time where people that you have given up on, people that you thought would never get saved, they're going to be conceived by the Holy Spirit. Please understand something. God know how to do it even without you. I'm telling you, there's some folks that God's going to call to salvation. They're going to go to bed a fool one night and wake up the next morning so hungry for God, they'll fall on their face and they'll say, God, help me. And that'll be just enough for the Holy Spirit to come in and change their lives. God knows how to call people into his body. Don't get it, don't get it mixed up. He, he know how to handle some stuff. Look at, what, look at verse 29. He says, the next day John seeth Jesus coming in to, unto him and, um, he, and saith, behold, the Lamb of God which taketh away the sins of the world. John the Baptist. And then look at the next verse. We'll read down to verse 34. He says, John said, this is he of whom I said after me, cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. He says, and I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water, John says. Next verse. He says, and John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit. John said this, and he bears record of this. I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove. Now, it wasn't a dove, but he says, he says, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven. He says it, it looked like a dove, and it abode upon Jesus. John said, I saw it. He said, I saw it. He says, and I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptized with the Holy Ghost. And, and I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. So we have record of, of this experience that Jesus is walking and John saw the Spirit of God descending on Jesus and it stayed there. I want you to read carefully in the Bible and I want you to notice there were no miracles done before this time. None. Why? Because he had not yet received the Holy Spirit. He had not yet received the helper. He was trying to demonstrate to men with a physical body how to walk on the earth. And the first thing he says, the first thing he demonstrates is you can't do this without the Holy Spirit. Whatever you're trying to do, just hold up. You can't do it without the Holy Spirit. And Jesus was saying, listen, I'm in this physical body, in this physical world. I know I can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. No miracles, nothing supernatural happened, nothing happened before this time took place. And after he received the Holy Spirit, he was now equipped and he was ready to depend on the Holy Spirit to do things in this earth that men had never seen. See, the Holy Spirit gave the advantage. The Holy Spirit will give you and I the advantage on the earth. We are in the physical body. We are subject to physical laws. And the Holy Spirit now gives us the advantage to, to operate above physical laws and to do things that people can't see in this physical world. 
But somehow or another, we've put them out of our mind. We've put them out of our study. We've put them out of our preaching. And we are trying to get things done without being sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And we've got to change that. We've got to change it today. So look what happens after the Holy Spirit is now upon Jesus. We see the first miracle in John, St. John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, the miracle of Jesus now turning water to wine. All right, he, you know, he, he starts off saying, my time has not yet come. And even while he said that, his time came. Look at this. And on the third day, there was marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, they have no wine. And Jesus saith unto her, woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Isn't that something? He said his hour not yet come, and then watch it came. His mother saith unto his servants, now whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. She said, do whatever he tell you to do. And there were set there six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three firkins apiece. And Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he saith unto them, draw out now and bear unto the governor of the feast, and they bear it. Nine. And when the ruler of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, he tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was, but the servants which drew the water knew. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom, and here's what he said. And he said unto him, every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. And when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. So he says, they're drunk, so you serve the bad part, you know, when they're drunk. He says, but thou has kept the good wine until now. Verse 11. This beginning of miracles, this began miracles, this beginning of miracles, this began the miracles did Jesus in Cana of Galilee and manifested forth his glory and his disciples believed on him. Notice when the Holy Spirit came on Jesus in chapter 1, we see him manifesting his glory in chapter 2. I am telling you that this is available for every born-again Christian who will begin to recognize the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit that you can now manifest the glory of God when you understand that it's not coming from you, it's coming from the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit which equips you to do things above the natural. Now I tell you, there's some things that are getting ready to happen. There's some things getting ready to happen that you would not normally see in the natural. And people are going to have a hard time believing it. But I'm telling you, the glory of God is about to rise and shine. The glory of God is about to manifest within this world. And guess how God's going to do it? The Holy Ghost that's on you and the Holy Ghost that's on me, praise God. He's about to use those of us who recognize the presence of the Holy Spirit and who will dare walk in faith and camaraderie and partnership with the Holy Spirit. We're going to see some things change. We're going to speak to mountains and those mountains are going to move. We're going to lay hands on the sick and those sick people are going to get well. You see, what happened is we, we were doing those things at one time, trusting in the Holy Spirit, and then we moved on down to start trusting in ourselves and started trusting in our principles and forgot about the power and where it came from. But in the name of Jesus, I can't do nothing without the Holy Spirit. You'll see Jesus saying that in Scripture. You've got to understand it's not by your might. It's not by your power but it's by his spirit, praise God. And I tell you what, there's a boldness coming over Taffy and I. We are just not going to settle for what happens in this natural world when we have somebody like the Holy Spirit that is living in us and abiding in us. And if we'll begin to walk in the confidence of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives, we will operate above, hallelujah, this natural realm. That's what the super is all about. It's, 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 it's God's super in this natural realm bringing you above the natural, praise God. Honey, we're going to get ready to speak to things and they're going to change. We're going to be able to call things that be not and they're going to be, praise the Lord. Why? Because of us? No, but because of the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, because of the power of God that, that, that abides on and in our lives. Amen. 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 Forgive me, I'm getting kind of excited, but I, I know where my help comes from. I know where my help comes from. And, and listen, listen to me. 
And, and, and I realized this other day in my time spent with the Holy Spirit. Knowledge is good. In all you're getting, get understanding. That is good. Knowing how to decipher the Bible is good. Knowing how to rightly divide the word of truth is good. But intelligence without the empowerment. Intelligence without the empowerment. I, I'm glad. I'm glad I know what I know. Thank you, Jesus. And the Holy Spirit probably can do a, a lot more with me because I know what I know. Glory to God. But I'm, I'm, I, I, I am even more glad that the Holy Spirit can help me with things I don't know. I'm glad that the Holy Spirit can show up and do something and I got to go and be tutored on what he just did. So more than anything, I want to have a willing heart. Hallelujah. I want to have faith that God can do impossible things. I want to have faith that God can can, can cause things to happen above the natural realm. And because I have faith in the Holy Spirit and I have faith in, in the empowerment that God has given me, that God's going to teach me and, and show me how to live under this new covenant. Show me how to live uh, in this love of God. Show me how to treat one another. Show me how to believe and receive certain things. He's going to teach me how to live by faith. He's going to teach me how to walk in the finished works of Jesus. He's going to teach me how to call things that be not as though they were. He's going to teach me how to be consistent and how to be constant and how to be content. Praise God. That is a, a, a work of the Holy Spirit as well. Hallelujah. That's a work of the Holy Spirit as well. Changing me from the inside out. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Taking away your old desires and giving you new desires. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Things you used to do, you ain't going to want to do no more. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Don't forget about that. Giving you a new attitude. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Teach you how to love what's unlovable. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Changing your personality and your character. Hallelujah. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Taking your sharp spear and dulling it out so it won't keep hurting and killing people. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. Peace in your life. Joy in your life. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. That's something I can't do by myself. I can't transform my, my old self to the place where God wants me to be without the Holy Spirit and without the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 14. And verse 10, I'm excited. I don't mean, if I sound like I'm hollering and screaming, that's just my excitement because I know that I know, I see and I have seen what happens in the body of Christ when we all have a personal relationship with the Holy Spirit, not some little half cop relationship that says I'm a Christian because I got a T-shirt on or I'm a Christian because I'm a member of World Changes. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about I'm a Christian because Christ lives on the inside of me and I know him and he know me and I know when he's talking to me and he hear me when I talk to him. That's what I'm talking about. A real relationship. Not this little stuff we play. We play games in church, man. We got to stop. We play games with church. We play games on the pulpit. We play games with people. We got to stop all that. We got to let the Holy Spirit show us how to do things. You know, diligent work. That's a work of the Holy Spirit. How is it that some people, you know, people, I thank God people that are praying for Taff and I, but we, we, couldn't have, we couldn't do what we do during this pandemic every single day if it wasn't for the power of the Holy Spirit empowering us and keeping us stirred up. It's Him. It's in Him we move. It's in Him we breathe. It's in Him we have our very being. Look at what he says, verse 10. Believeth thou not that I am in the Father? And the Father is in me. Now I'm going to show you that Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as his Father. I'm going to show you that. And why shouldn't he? The Bible says he was conceived by him. We, 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 we do weird things even with the Trinity. I mean, you know, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. You know, it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. It's still equal God. It's God functioning as a Father, God functioning as a Son, God functioning as the Holy Spirit. He, he's, he's still God. You know, you know, one plus one plus one in this case is not three, it's one. <laughs> Amen. And, and he's referring to the Holy Spirit as Father. He says, Believeth thou not that I am in the Father and the Father is in me by way of the Holy Spirit? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, that's the Holy Spirit, he doeth the works. 
the Father that dwelleth in me, that's the Holy Spirit, he doeth the works. Jesus refers to the Holy Spirit as his Father, and why wouldn't he? And, and let me show you why. Look at this, Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 in the NLT. Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 in the NLT. Wow, how would it, why would he refer to the Holy Spirit as a Father? He says, and he considered, he, he considered this, uh, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived, watch this, by the Holy Spirit. He said Jesus was, the child that was in Mary was conceived or fathered by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah. And guess who gave birth to the new creation on the inside of you? the Holy Spirit. You and I were fathered by the Holy Spirit. That old you died, it went away, it passed on. That new creation was conceived by the Holy Spirit. God gave birth to that perfect part of you. And the perfect part of you is that born again part of you. It's that new creation in you. It's You are a spirit, you possess a soul, you live in a body. When you got born again, it was your spirit that changed. You lost that old man. You got that new man. That new creation was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus called the Holy Spirit in him the Father. So allow me to do that. The Father is in me. The Father is in me. The Holy Spirit operating as a Father in me. <laughs> Glory be to God. He's not a Father. He's not operating as a Father in heaven. The Father, my Father lives in me. The Holy Spirit lives in me to father me. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit lives in me to father me, praise God. So some of you say, well, you know, you didn't have a natural father. But I'm telling you, you'll never have a father like this. A father who loves you so much, he moved on the inside of you to father you. Glory be to God. To direct your steps, to correct you, praise God to lead you, to guide you, to tell you where to go and where not to go. You have a father living on the inside of you. And under the New Testament, this is why Jesus said this. The administrator said, under the New Testament, you no longer have to refer to him as God. Under the New Testament, you can refer to him as daddy. Your daddy lives on the inside of you. Your father lives on the inside of you. But what good is a father living inside of you that you ignore? What good is a father living inside of you that you don't pay attention to? You have a father living on the inside of you by way of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus and the Holy Spirit, they always work together. Every, during his time on the earth, everything you read and see about Jesus Christ is Jesus and his father working together. Jesus says, I don't even know what to tell you except the Father in me tell me. The Father's teaching you what to say and how to talk. Glory to God. Look at John 15, excuse me, John 5, 19. John 5, 19. Now, now this is what got me. I look at Jesus and here's what, here's what got me. He said, then answered Jesus and said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. All right, now Jesus is referring to himself. The Son can do nothing of himself. But what he sees the Father do. How do you, how you think you can do something of yourself except what you see the Father do? But Christianity means we have a relationship. We know our Father. Christianity says we spend time with our Father. In this case, it's not an absentee Father. It's absentee children. The Father's there. He moved on the inside of you. But you, you, you're remaining absent from him. You don't spend no time with him. You don't talk to him. You're, you're so engaged into the world. You're so engaged in trying to be like the world. You don't even understand it's what the, world's, the world has given you. The, what the world has given you is blindness. And the more you receive from the world, the more you become blind to what the Father has to give to you. They're absentee children. The Father is very present in this case. But what does a father do when the children don't want to cooperate or to hear or to be a part of it? And we get so used to pushing God aside, ignoring his words, that our heart becomes hardened and we don't even sense it no more. 
What happens when you sin, 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 and you convince yourself it's all right with God? It's all right with God. I'm teaching a series called What Goes Around Comes Around. I'm teaching a series called, see, the grace of God doesn't stop whatever goes around comes around. The Bible, because if that were the case, all of the good stuff you sow wouldn't be able to come back either. And so you're under, you're under this, this principle that says, dude, be careful for what you do because what you make happen here is going to show up one day. And a lot of people don't believe that. They, they, they say, well, that's all right with God. It, listen, God still loves you, but that's still going to happen. It, it, <laughs> I, I don't know what people think. Well, grace of God threw that principle out. Well, you know, the Galatians talked about that. Whatsoever a man soweth, that and that alone is what he's going to surely reap. Somehow you think you can just go and act ugly and ugly ain't going to come back to you. That's why the Holy Spirit is here to help you so you don't keep... See, the Father trying to help you because the Father knows what happens. When the Father says don't do this, he's saying don't do this because there is a principle in operation in this physical world and the, the, everything on the planet operates by that principle. Everything, it's a physical law, operates by that principle. And when you think you've gotten away with something and you don't know how that harvest is going to come back, it may come back in a way that you didn't think it was going to come back. So don't ever get comfortable in sin. Don't ever get comfortable in what you're doing because it's, it's coming back. It, it's coming around again. It's, it's not like, you know, that's not, you're not going to see that again. <laughs> let, me, let me calm down. But I, I'm, I'm going to teach that, but I'm not teaching it now but I, I am going to teach that. He said, then said Jesus, and he said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do. For what things soever he doth, these also does the son likewise. You know, we love to brag about the stuff we get from our natural father, but we hardly get anything from our heavenly father. Oh, I learned that from my daddy. Well, what have you learned from God lately? What have you learned from your heavenly father lately? Do you know him? Do you know him when he's talking to you? Do you see him when he's trying to protect you? Do you hear him when he's trying to guide you? Or do you mix up the ways of the world with the ways of the father and, and somehow thinks that God is no longer for diligence? You want to just pray and sit back and wait for it to happen, and, and you forgot about that God is a God of excellence, and he's a God of diligence, and he's a God that leads you and shows you how to do what needs to be done, and the things we have turned Christianity to, into, and they're just not true. That's just not how to fight. You live in a physical world, you live in a physical body, and there are certain physical things that have to take place in this physical world, certain physical activities that have to take place, and the Father will show you about those physical things that have to take place. You need God. You need God. And some of you are mad at the only one that can help you. Some of you have been stranded on the side of the highway for years. Some of you have talked yourself into something you know is wrong. And even though you've been in this wrong all these years, there's still the Father inside working, fighting, to not let you go and to, and, and to not let the world take you. He's still, he's still fighting for you. <laughs> we have a father in us. Daddy God lives in you. He, he wants to talk to you. He's talking to some of you right now. Open your eyes up. You have the advantage on the inside of you. God wants you to be as successful, more successful. God wants you to be more successful than what you want to be. God wants you to be more prosperous than what you want to be. God wants you to be healed. God wants you to be delivered. God wants you to be more happy than you want to be. But we, we think it's foolish. <clears throat> we think it's fool, foolish because we can't, we can't see him. We think it's foolish because that can't be real, because Satan fills your mind with doubt. And I'm telling you, God is about to make himself so real. He's already made himself so available, but we can, we can no longer continue to be absentee children, absentee sons and daughters. We got to trust God and we got to believe that he is. Amen. 
Look at John 5, 19. It says, Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself but what he seeth the Father do, for whatso think, ever things the Father do, these also the Son likewise he does. Now, here's the, the convincing that I had in my heart in reading this scripture. Listen to this. Jesus needed this ongoing partnership with the Holy Spirit in order to complete his mission. Jesus needed this ongoing partnership with the Holy Spirit in order to complete his mission. If Jesus depended on this ongoing relationship in order to, to complete his mission, who do we think we are trying to complete our mission without an ongoing partnership of the Holy Spirit? Every one of us have a mission in life. Every one of us has, we have a uh, assignment in life. We have something we've been called to do in life. Um, how do you think you're going? Jesus said, I cannot finish or complete this mission without this ongoing partnership. I say what he said. I can't complete this mission without this ongoing partnership with the Holy Spirit. I can't do it. I can't do it. There's no way, you know, next year I'll be celebrating 40 years in ministry. There is no way that nothing could have gotten done without this ongoing partnership with the Holy Spirit, including the continued metamorphosis and change in my own life. The metamorphosis and change in my life as a father, as a husband, as a pastor. I, I, I have to have that ongoing relationship with the Holy Spirit. I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done this before. I only do what the Father is showing me what to do. And then maybe one day I may qualify to sharing some information but the thing I know I can do is tell people he lives in you too. And he can father you the way he fathered me. And he can help you to get over stuff you used to do. And I can tell you, I'm, I'm glad to say for some of you, some of the things you used to do, you're over that. But it's because of that ongoing relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's because of him. It's because of him. How much more do we need the Holy Spirit to help us complete our mission? I, I, I want to show you something. Look at Acts. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. I, I can recall where, man, especially when I'm in my 20s and I'm starting this ministry, I'm like, I have to pray and I have to see God because I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I, I think that was a lot better than today because you have to be careful not to fall into temptation that says because I've done this for 40 years I don't need to depend on the Holy Spirit like I used to that's dangerous remain a student of grace no matter how long you've been in the game he says and being assembled together with them commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but wait for the promise of the Father which saith he, ye, you have heard of me, verse 5, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. You hear what he said? He says, hold on, before, before you go on your mission, stay right here in Jerusalem, wait, wait. I, you know, I think a lot of times people do stuff and they're not waiting, they're not waiting on the Holy Spirit. They have nothing that says the Spirit of God told me to do this. They have nothing that says that the Spirit of God is leading me to do this. People go with their own plan and, you know, focusing in on uh, if God did it for them, he can do it for me. And that may not be the mission. That may not be the plan. Or he may not want you to go that way. That's, that's, that's what the church is caught in. We keep marrying methods. And God's trying to do a new thing, a new way. And he can't do it because everybody assumes that the right thing to do is just do it the way that it's always been done. And, and, the, and the father wants to show you this path for you. He wants to show you this assignment for you. He, he, he's given you a vision and he's given you a desire, but you keep walking ahead of him and you're supposed to walk with him, not behind him, not in front of him. You're supposed to walk with him. And he will lead you into green pastures. 
He will show you the things you need to go because, see, God knows when you need to take a pit stop. Let, let, me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So the, the Spirit of God is very clear that he, he said, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. And some of the, some of the most powerful things you can do as a Christian is wait until you receive the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit have to say about this? People don't care about what the Holy Spirit has to say. They do what they want to do. And I, I've noticed that. People do what they want to do. That's why I'm, I'm not like I used to be. I, I, I felt like I could, could change them. If I, if I could change people, I just keep, I'm going to just keep pounding, pounding, pounding. And I, I look at things in the past and I pound, pound, pound. And I realize at, at all of that time and all of that effort, and, and I really wanted it more than they wanted it. And, and I knew what Holy Ghost said, but he wouldn't. And I just said, you know what? I'm not doing these people no good. I'll tell them what God want me to tell them, and then I'm going to back up. And, and God knows how to teach people. Because when they don't receive his instructions and his teachings, God will let stuff happen. God will just back up and say, all right, you, you, you won't pay attention to what I'm saying? Go on. I tried to tell you there's a gigantic ditch there, but you keep going. Go on, fall in the ditch. And then when you get in that ditch, and, and then you'll, you'll lift your hands up and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee, no other help I know. See, sometimes we got to get out the way. Some of us well-to-do Christians, you need to even, you need the Holy Ghost to tell you when it's time to engage and when it's time to, to back up. And some of you engage and the Holy Ghost didn't tell you to engage. You engaged because you were afraid of what people were going to say and you, were, you had a, oh, well, well, you're supposed to do this. No, you're supposed to do what the Father leads you to do. And that's why it takes so long is because sometimes you engage and you mess somebody up and what could have been over with in a month took another year because you kept getting in the way. You keep helping people that God won't even help. And then, and then, and then the folks who try to manipulate folks, you go around talking about, well, what you should do. You, you the church, you should do this. No, we should do what the Holy Ghost do and quit trying to marry a method to do what everybody else do. The Holy Ghost know how to run this thing. The Holy Ghost know who need this and who need that and when they need this and how they need that. Who they, no, the Holy Ghost may inspire you at some times to say no, but we don't, we don't believe that. Why? Because we don't have no work in relationship with the Holy Ghost. We've dismissed the God and say, I know the way. I'm going to do this on my own. And then you end up falling in the ditch, and then they fall in the ditch too. That's what he meant by that. You know, you, you, you fall in the blind, leading the blind, and both of y'all end up in a ditch. And then God got to come get both of y'all out of the ditch. I'm telling you, man, we got to back this thing up. The, what, what, what does it mean to be a Christian? It means Christ lives in me to teach me and to guide me, to counsel me and to lead me. What does it mean to be a Christian? A personal relationship with Jesus. <laughs> this, this, this Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a personal, a personal relationship with the Father that lives on the inside of you so he can train you and lead you and guide you and show you and comfort you and give you happiness that you got to look around and say, I don't even know why I'm so happy and give you joy. And you don't even know where the joy came from except it was his joy that he gave you. Well, it's not going to do me any good to go and, you know, bash everybody because of what I think. I'm just bad. No, no, no. I'm just, I'm saying this is light I'm trying to give you to shine the darkness. Hopefully it's waking you up and say, whoa, whoa, I, I haven't, I haven't been dependent on the Holy Spirit. Hopefully this message is like, oh, wow, wow, wow. I've dismissed him. Uh, that was him talking to me at the red light. Uh, that conviction I had, oh, that was the Holy Spirit trying to share. And the more you get in the word and the more you spend time in prayer, then the, the clearer that voice gets and you begin to hear him from the inside and he begins to lead and guide you and, and instruct you and bring you into places that you know good and well you could not have gotten there without him. Yeah. So wait on the Holy Spirit. Wait on the Holy Spirit. Taff and I were talking about this the other day. You know, people start things for God and they give it about two, three years and, if, and then they quit. What? Two or three years in the ministry, I was still probably talking to eight people. But I knew that was the word of the Lord. And, 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 and how many people showed up didn't, didn't determine that was the word of the Lord. I knew what God told me to do. And, 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 and that was a time where two people showed up, but I knew what God told me to do. And then five, that was, I knew what God told me to do. But if I was paying attention to the crowds, or if I paid attention to the inflammation rather than real growth, a lot of you look at stuff in this inflammation. That comes from a problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, anyway, but I need you to pay attention to what the Holy Ghost is saying. 
and you stand there and you stand there because, see, you got to understand something. If there are five people there, that's one thing. But what if there are five presidents of, of gigantic nations? That's a whole other thing, isn't it? You don't know who you might be talking to. But, but too many people are being led by the wrong criteria. The criteria is not the number. Quit, quit, quit counting seats or quit counting people in seats. What did God tell you to do? And then whatever he told you to do, stick with it. And watch him do what he tell you to do. And you might not know until you get to heaven. Like, what did I really accomplish? It was that one person, that one person you impacted, that one person you, you impacted, and they, and they led 20 billion people to the kingdom. And you don't even know why they called you up front when you got to heaven. I want to do what God told me to do. I ain't trying to build no image. I ain't trying to impress nobody, and I still believe that a man def that defends himself will remain average. I want what God wants me to have. Because at the end of the day, when I close my eyes and my spirit leaves my body, I am absent from the body and I'm present with the Lord, and I'm going to live for eternity. And I'm not going to let this, this little small time, you know, mess up what God... I don't want to go to heaven and hear my, 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 my average and faithless servant Job incomplete. I want to walk up in there and, and see Jesus. Crap low! I'm like, Jesus. I want him to grab me and hug me and put a, 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 a position on his face that say, I really love you. It's worth it all. It's worth everything. I still haven't forgot that I got to die one day. I still haven't forgotten that there's a heaven and a hell one day. What are you going to, what are you going to be like? Check it out. You, you, you're going to die. That, that's a given. You're going to die. Man's appointed to die once. You're going to die. All right, you die, and you ain't believe nothing. But then when you die, then everything that I tried to tell you is true. But you didn't believe it because you didn't like me, or you didn't agree what I said, or you got mad at me or something. But it's still true. And then you, you, you die, and, and it's like, oh, my God. Everything was, I didn't know it. I was blind. I didn't know and I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get you to see that this word is the only light, the only antidote for the blindness that you live with right now. Just because you see it on TV doesn't make it right. Just because somebody said it or a whole bunch of people doing it don't make it right. If a whole bunch of people decide to jump off a building and kill themselves, will you follow? You know, in this day and time, I think people will. We got we to gotta open up our eyes. We're, we're blind and I'm trying to wake you up to the power of the Holy Spirit. Look what he says here. This is powerful. So they waited on the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. Look what happens in verse 4. He says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he shall have, which saith he, you have heard of me. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. And not after many days. Now look at Matthew chapter 3, 16, 17, and Matthew 4 and 1. Let's read Matthew 3, 16, 17, and then straight into Matthew 4, verse 1. All right, now watch this. Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. Lo, the heavens were open unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and light, not lightning upon his head. And lo, a voice from heaven, here's what he said, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. All right, Matthew 4, 1. Then, all right, now check this out. Did you see what just happened? Holy Ghost came, he was baptized in water, Holy Ghost came on him. Voice from heaven said, this is my son, I'm well pleased. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Somebody said, that can't be God. Look at that. The Holy Ghost led Jesus to a place to be tempted of the devil. See, some of y'all think it's strange when you're led into hard places. Some of y'all think something wrong. It can't be God that led me into this wilderness place. But how many of you know sometimes God has to allow us to take a pit stop? to kind of equip us for the journey. You know, in, in racing, car, car, racing cars, sometimes something might be wrong with the tire, something might be wrong with the engine, and in order to continue the journey, 
they have to pull off to the side, take a pit stop, and get equipped so they can finish the race. And that's what God has to do sometime with us. As you walk this journey in life, God knows your destination, but he also knows that sometimes you need to stop to get equipped for the journey. Yeah, listen to me now. <laughs> Whether the devil knows it or not, but sometimes God will use that sucker at a pit stop just to check you out to make sure you're ready for everything else that's coming your way. Please don't misunderstand me. I'm not saying that God uses the devil, but I tell you what, God is so smart, praise God, that he knows how to take the things of the devil and turn it around for your good. Now that's scripture. God can take some bad stuff and turn it into some good stuff. God can take a mess and make it a part of a masterpiece. Glory be to God. And I'm telling you, learn how to be content wherever you are. You might be in a wilderness experience, but be content right there because God's going to use where you are. Don't, 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 don't avoid the challenges in your life because without challenges, there can never be a change. And there are challenges that are going to come to your life, but those challenges don't come to get you to quit. Those challenges, challenges don't come to get you to give up. Some of you crumble at the first sight of a challenge. Some of you want to leave God at the first sight of a challenge. At the first sight of a challenge, there ain't no God. See, that, that was wrong. If there was a God, then why I'm like this right now? God trying to teach you how to pay your bills. You was spending your money on all those kind of stuff, so he, a pit stop took place. <laughs> let, let you be homeless for a couple of days. And then you'll make sure you check on that money a little bit better and do what you need to do. God know what he's doing. God know what he's doing. And there ain't nothing happened that surprised God. And there's no situation in your life that happened that surprised God. God knows what he's doing. I have learned to take the good with the bad and knew that God was going to make it all good. I don't regret my bad no more. Mm. I think the bad had to be mixed with the good to make me who I am right now. There are certain things I, I, I understand now that it was the bad that got my attention on the good. Glory to God. It was me looking at God saying, I don't know how to do this. It was panic knocking on my door. And sometimes I opened and let the panic in and groundless fear was there. And I had no reason to be afraid. But through all of that, God could show me. Let me show you. Show sure enough, you ain't got a reason to be afraid. I am your God. I will walk with you. I will talk with you. I will deliver you out of ditch. And I can now testify about a God who can deliver you out of a ditch because I've been in a ditch. Oh, glory. I can talk to you about a God who can deliver you out of, out of cancer and, 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 and all of that stuff because he delivered me out. See, there's something about a God who will let you go through something. Yeah, that's good. So his glory might be seen. Remember the story about this question that was asked? This boy who was born blind. And they say, God, who was it that caused them to be born blind? You know, was it, was it the mother's fault? Was it the father's fault? Was it Joe's fault? God said, no, the boy born blind, that you might see my glory. That you might see my glory. Don't be looking at who fault it is, but look forward to seeing my glory. I don't know why you're in a ditch. I don't know why you broke, busted, and disgusted. I don't know why you like what you like and do what you do, but I'm looking forward to seeing the glory of God. So don't give up on your marriage. Don't give up on your children. Don't give up on your finances. Don't give up on nothing because if he said it, he'll do it. If he spoke it, he'll bring it to pass. You got a good God. You have a father. And just because, just because it's time for you to take a pit stop, use that as an opportunity to say, God's equipping me to complete the journey. God's equipping me. Every time a challenge comes your way, don't run from the challenge. Don't be afraid of the challenge. Say, bring it on. All you're doing is giving me wisdom to deposit into my wisdom account. I'll understand it more. I'll understand it better. I'm not going to be afraid of trouble. 
There should come a time in your life where you start troubling your trouble rather than being afraid of that trouble. Listen to this. I wrote this down. I think this is so powerful. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited you to God, the Holy Spirit. Let me say that again. Everything that goes into a life of pleasing God, that's the first step. Are you living a life to please God or are you living a life to please yourself? Life with Jesus becomes a whole lot better when you make that decision. I am living my life every day to please God. And then ask yourself every time you're at a crossroad, every time you're even praying, am I praying for God to do this to bring, bring, to bring pleasure to me? Or am I asking God to do this to bring pleasure to God? In other words, what pleases God? What pleases God? I want to choose what pleases God. I want to choose what pleases God. And you know, when you start doing what pleases God, he starts doing what pleases you. Hallelujah. And so here's the miraculous thing. The miraculous thing about this is that everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has already been given to us by getting to know personally the Holy Spirit. By getting to know personally the Holy Spirit, he begins to teach you about a life that pleases God. By getting to know personally the Holy Spirit. The best invitation we ever received was from him. And I look at this, 2 Peter chapter 1, 3 in the message translation. 2 Peter 1 and 3 in the message translation. He said this, because I need you to hear, you're, this, this, is, this is, listen to this, everything that goes into a life of pleasing God has been, miraculously, has been miraculously given to us by getting to know personally and intimately the one who invited us to God. The best invitation we ever received the best invitation we ever received. Wow. I've got a lot to talk about. I want to spend time talking about this relationship with the Father who lives inside of you. I just wanted to kind of wake you up today to really depend, trust consistently on Him. We're about to go into a great time, a great time of seeing the manifestations of the glory of God in places and in the lives of people that you thought God would never use. God's going to call famous people to be saved, sports stars to be saved, drug pushers to be saved, wicked men from around the world are going to wake up with a thirst and a hunger. God's going to show you how powerful he is. God's going to give you a thirst and a hunger. You know, be to lay in bed without being nudged by God and you just want to get up and spend time with him. Things that you do will one day disgust you. It will become disgusting. Because when God invades your life, when God begins to move on the altar of your heart, things change by the Holy Spirit. So this self-modification, where you're trying to modify your behavior so you can prove you're a good Christian, you're going to wake up in amazement every day saying, look at God. You're going to find yourself walking throughout the day, getting in your car that you, you should not have had, and say, look at God. You'll walk around in your house, and it's paid for, and you're like, look at God. And you begin to worship him. You will hear a song that describes his excellence in your life. 
and tears will begin to flow down your face as you begin to recognize that He's the one. And then one day, one day it'll come to you that every good thing you've ever experienced in your life, it came from Him. It's always been about Him. And those tears will no longer be tears of sorrow, but tears of joy and tears of gladness. And every good thing that happens out of your mouth, you'll begin to flow and to give God thanks. And even at 80 and 90 years old, you begin to say, if I, was, if I was 20, I'd run around the field to give God thanks and praise for His glory. That I still live today, that I, I'm alive today. I, I can inhale and exhale today. And the days you wake up with no pain in your body, you give God the glory for all of the good. And then you come to realize that God uses His goodness to cause men to change. I speak that goodness over your life right now. I speak that goodness over your family right now. God is good, and don't let nobody tell you any different. He's good. I can't wait to see him. But we got a job to do here. I ain't gonna punk out because it's looking rough around the world. I'm not going to punk out because there's a pandemic going on and divisions and all that kind of stuff now. But I hear these words loud and clear, arise and shine, for my light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen up upon thee. This is our time, church. But we cannot do it without the Father within. But with him, we can do all things. Lay hands on the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, walk in a love that will gain the attention of the world, and then give you the glory for it all. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things that he has done. Father, I thank you. Thank you for the comforter. Thank you, Jesus, for sending us the comforter to guide us through this new covenant, to administrate this new covenant, to administrate a behavior that is holy, to administrate a mindset that's been renewed with your word to administrate relationships that are born and conceived out of you. We give you praise. Now move into every household. There's no time or distance in the spirit. Move into every household. Move into every household. Lord, take this message beyond even the numbers that are hearing it right now. Take this message beyond and use it, Holy Spirit, to speak and I give you praise now in Jesus name. Now, for those of you who've never been born again and right now you sense by the spirit of God, it's time for me to give my life to God. It's time for me to get it together. I've tried to rest. Now it's time to try the best. Jesus is the best. I need you, Lord. Then pray this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner. And today I realize that I cannot do this without you. I ask you to come into my life. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died for all of my sins. I ask you now to be my Lord and my Savior. Sit on the throne of my heart. Be my Lord. Save me is my prayer. And by faith, in Jesus' name, I am saved. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want you to text this keyword, I'm saved, 
That's one word to 51555. Provide your name and your email address, and I want to send you a free ebook that will help you in your new walk with Christ, depending on the Father within. Amen. You know, this is a perfect time to give because we're, we're worshiping Him. And a lot of people don't even understand that giving is a part of your worship. Giving is a reflex of the love that you have for the Father. Giving causes you to remember all that He's done. If, if there's any good that's ever happened in your life, it came from God. Allow that to motivate you to give, not from a grudging heart, but from a willing heart. As you give this morning, I want you to give with the gratitude of He saved me, He sanctified me, He healed me, He delivered me. And let's be gracious this morning, gracious enough to say, I bring these gifts to you, O oh God, for all that you've already done. Magnify Him. Make His name big. Glory not only means thanksgiving and it not only means the manifested word, but it also talks about this part of worship. Give glory to His name. Bring an offering into His courts and worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. I want you to do something today that will cause you to remember the gift that you gave. <laughs> He's worthy. He'll always be worthy. Somebody says, Pastor Dollar, I ain't got but a dollar. Well, if you want to use a dollar to worship God, He receives it as worship. Worship Him in the beauty of His holiness. If you're using the text today, you can text world changers space and then the amount of your gift to 74483. You can dial the number for help to give, 866-477-7683. You can give now there. If you'd like to give on the online, you can go to worldchangers.org and uh, use your PayPal there if you wish. And if you'd like to give through the mail, 2500 Burdett Road is is on the screen. On the screen, all the different ways that you, you can give. And uh, we're just grateful. We're just thankful. There is something invading your space. There's someone moving into your home. You watch. Something amazing is happening in your life. You watch. God knows how to cleanse us, how to make us, how to mold us, how to pick us up, how to motivate us. He is God. In Jesus' name. Well, praise God and worship God with your gifts. Give Him glory and give Him thanksgiving. And as you're giving, we want to share these announcements with you. And uh, I pray that they bless you as you discover just what's been going around and going on at World Changes. I've got a a, a, a space of time that I'll share with you in the next coming weeks of, of the protocol of us gathering back together. Uh, but uh, the stream is available and we'll continue to pay attention to the stream. And my prayer is that when we get back in the building, man, we're, we're changed people. That this year of learning over the stream has changed our lives. In Jesus' name. Now, you're going to stick out with us. You're going to stick out like a sore thumb if you ain't, you're going to be able to tell if you've been fed all year now or not, but we <laughs> will, you know, go ahead and back up and get it before you get here. Amen. And uh, we just praise God. Go ahead and roll those announcements. Hello, World Changers Nation. We thank God for another great power pack message as we approach the new year. And thank you for joining us online today. Our words cannot express how grateful we are for our online community. And because of you, we can continue our kingdom passion for helping people excel in every area of life. 
Now let's check out what's coming up soon. And here are the latest happenings and announcements. We're here for you every Wednesday and Friday at 10 o'clock a.m. and we host our weekly community food giveaway at our College Park campus. Now we look forward to serving you and your family while our supplies last. You can simply call 770-210-5700 for more information. Do you want a place to show up and show off your acting, dancing, or singing skills? Do you have experience in graphic artistry, teaching, or administration? Now, World Changes Children's Ministry has a spot for you on their team. Now, sign up today by calling 770-210-5709. Now, can we count on you to make the difference? This message has been approved by the WCCI Children's Ministry. Talk to you soon. Sermon Songs Volume 4, Mastering Your Emotions, is here to help you master your emotions. Now, this power pack compilation of life-changing sermons and inspirational songs is all about mastering your emotions and conquering your fears through Christ. Now, check out new music from Creflo Dollar featuring Jordan L'Oreal, including hit singles Faith Strong and Joy. Now, visit www.sermonsongs.com now to get your copy today. Help us bring joy to a child's heart this holiday season. Now we know this Christmas may look a little different for everyone, and we're so excited to continue showing up for families with Project Angel Tree. Now you can take part in this initiative by texting HOLIDAY2020 to 51555 to help a child in need, or you can simply visit missions.creflodollarministries.org. World Changers, we will be home for Christmas, that's right. We are looking forward to joining you in your home via our live stream at 10 a.m. on Friday, December 25th. So make plans now to join us on Christmas Day for service as we celebrate our Savior. Now, while you're marking your calendars, don't forget to set a reminder to also join us for New Year's Eve service as well. Now, we'll be streaming live on Friday, December 31st at 10 p.m. And this is a New Year's Eve service. <laughs> you don't want to miss it. So join us. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand on the word, the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. One more time. <laughs> Y'all remember that song? Now, let's take a look at how standing on the word of God has helped Ms. Lansing through the pandemic. Good morning. I'm just so thankful to be here with you this morning. God has truly been good and showing his light on me. I just came through a period of time where this global incident uh, really showed me where I was walking uh, with God. And for the angels of World Changers Church International, instilling us with the wisdom of God's word, I knew where to go to prevent the attack. Bless God that Pastor Taffy and Pastor Creflo truly are angels because they come in a form where they helped me understand that God's word is the only thing that's going to take me through this. And I was getting down and kind of getting uh, overcome with all that's going on. And lo and behold, I hit one of pastor's teachings on knowing God and my relationship and who I am in him. I am a child of the most high God living and breathing in this land. And I'm here to tell others about it and God has given me the wisdom to do so through his word. Thank you, World Changers. I am in the World Changers Nation. We know the best way to gain wisdom is by applying God's word to our lives. So thank you for sharing your testimony, Miss Lansing. We really appreciate it. So hey, World Changers, until we meet again online, meet us on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter to keep the conversation going and to give us your prayer requests, testimonies, and stories of inspiration. Now we want to hear all about it. Now you can always call us at 770-210-5700 during regular office hours with any of your questions or concerns. Now remember, we're all in this together. So share today's message and happenings with a friend. <laughs> They'll thank you later. Well, praise God. We love you guys so much. Have an amazing day and fellowship with him, fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Let him show you about those great things that are to come in, in your life. Amen? Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the almighty God. 
be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And everybody said, amen. God bless you, world changers. God bless you.